What's going on, everyone? It's Tom from TriCard Games. And it is Mr. Extra from Team Extra. And this is Meta Talk. Meta Talk! All right, so, all right, Tom. What do we want to talk about today, my boy? So, let's start things off with, of course, the new set of uh, Duels Nexus comes out. Uh, the pre-release is next weekend, and then the following weekend behind that is the official release. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the big cards that are uh, that are coming up and a lot of people are looking forward to. Yeah, Dune's pretty. Yeah. Dune's pretty crazy. Dune, Dune has a lot of crazy stuff, a uh, lot of support for a lot of stuff. But uh, what, which one you want to talk about first? Which there's which a lot of type? crazy cards in this set. There's a lot of big support uh, for Infernoble, for Synchro decks, just in general. But the first card, of course, we have to address the elephant in the room, which would be Revolution Synchron. One of the best cards in this set. Going to be good for several different decks. Um, I know one of the ones that uh, one of the decks that I'm looking forward to building is just Synchro Turbo. So you just pull out a bunch of Synchrons and do what you got to do and uh, Turbo out. You're able to pull out Dispater. You're able to bring out the new Cosmic Quasar Dragon. Uh, you're able to just cheat out the new Crimson Dragon from this set. This mm -hmm. set is just it's built like a 5D set. It's a very it's a very synchro heavy set and of course you're just gonna want to resolve it's like resolve it's the same thing with the synchro pile resolve junk speeder and win. Yeah, and with I, a lot of people still were want to play around with assault synchron and I think assault synchron and rev synchron in the same deck is going to be insane. Mm -hmm. Because especially with assault synchron, you're a lot of people now are using it for uh, for like a dragon, I guess dragon link. Sometimes they're using that to go into Dispater or a, a, was it Boreload Savage, and uh, immediately or Excel mainly Excel Synchro or Stardust Synchro. And whenever they go into that, they're able to just tribute it off, pull out Stardust, bring back Excel after banishing uh, Assault Synchron. And then if you decide to go into Dispater, you can bring back Assault Synchron yeah. for another Synchro play. Yeah, but I believe we'll see that card played in quite a few decks coming up. Not just that one synchro deck, but I think we might see uh, people tinker around with it with a Manadium engine. Um, could it be? Now the question is: Is it going to be overshadowed by a lot of the new Manadium support coming up? Um, overshadowed? Are we are we talking about like assault, assault, or revolution synchron? Uh, probably assault synchron. And well, and and well, one of each. We'll do. We'll break that into two different things there. Uh, assault synchron right now, where Manadium currently is, since I'm like the Manadium enthusiast here. Um, it gets used more in the Bestial variant for it because you have more. You have a lot more access to like the Excel line, the Golden Dust Peter, rather than like the Scarecrow version. You're you're gonna able. To, you're usually able to get all your orbs up pretty consistently. So you don't really need to run it, but it's kind of it's kind of free at the end of the day. But yeah. post post Dune, people are probably going to end up running both. And in Revolution Synchron, for example, also sets up the Calamity Lock, which in my opinion is it's, yep. really, it's really good. But my only concern with it is you have to wait till it goes to your opponent's turn and then drop out the Calamity, like because there's no yeah. point doing it during your turn. Which means they have time to stop the drop. So yeah. I'm probably going to just keep Christia blocking people, which is way funnier in my opinion. Yeah, and it that's been known to shut people out pretty quick. And the thing is with Christia, I think it's what is it, if it's destroyed by an opponent's card effect or something, you put it on top of your deck and you can re Christia lock somebody the next turn? Um, yeah, because if you got four fairies in your graveyard, you can special it, and chances are. Because when you go through the, the combination and everything and say you have some orbs in rotation, you're going to have usually four. It's usually you yeah. have like well, you have like two makes, two fearlesses, or three makes of one of the fearless, or yeah. that, or you have three makes, and then you have your Astroloud. I think you mentioned it before. Uh, by the end of that combo, you should, if you did the combo correctly, you should have all, all at least four fairies engraved with Vicious Astroloud. It, and counts, a of, it counts fairies on the field, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, then yeah, you you definitely be able to get that then. Yeah. So for example, let's say they get rid of Christia, right, and it goes yeah. back to the top of the deck, and then they clear your board because Astrolabe has Astrolabe's on the end board for the Christia lock. Draw Christia, special out again because you have three yeah. beacon grave, and then they need Astrolabe because there's a fairy as well, and then there you go, you get you you're, you're in it. 
Yeah. Uh, one of the other cards that I kind of wanted to go over as well is uh, the Altergeist support. Mm -hmm. That is going to be um, that's going to be pretty scary. Uh, there was a guy at locals yesterday who was running a uh, pre Dune Altergeist build, and he actually managed to get I think top four, top five out of sixteen people, which is still pretty solid. I feel like people um, forget what the deck does. That's probably what it comes down to. Because the Ultra guys, from what I remember, because I've played against it a few times, it does very weird stuff. Yeah. It's not, it does very unorthodox stuff for a trap deck. It plays around a lot of the floodgates. Like, it, it can play around rivalry. It can, play, it can play around, like, rivalry and goes and flipped on field. Like, it can play around both of those. Mm -hmm. But the moment you flip a Tikaboo or a Summon Limit or anything like that, it's, it's going to be pretty rough to, for them to play through it. The other thing that that deck struggles with is if you put out a big fat tower monster, they usually have a hard time dealing with it. Yeah. Um, which, that's, uh, I'm excited to see what else that deck's going to be able to do, because it, it does some pretty, it does some pretty wild stuff right now. Um, are you, what do you think about the new, uh, Infernoble stuff? Uh, the new Infernoble stuff, they get, and this is the first time I've seen this in the game. I got a Link One monster that's three thousand attack. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah. Like, what the no. fuck? And then they get a couple extra things, and basically it's just let's just call it. It's like extra fodder. Like the deck was able to do some stuff, but we're but it had to put out that Link Two in order to kind of play through it, right? Because yeah. that Link Two, uh, I sold. I I want to say I sold. Um, if that thing resolved, they could pretty much do everything. And then if you impermed it, it kind of shut off their lines. And now they're able to, if I remember correctly, kind of kind of get around that. And they eventually are going to get a trap card that is a Omni Negate as well. Yeah, they they got a lot of like just overall support. Like it wasn't just main deck support. It wasn't just extra deck support. They got a Synchro. They got I think one or two links in this. They've mm -hmm. got the Noble Arts Me or the Noble Arms Museum. That has like you're able to do more searching through that through your it's a field spell you're able to search for a lot of your uh, equip spells. Mm -hmm. They got an equip spell and they got uh, several different spell and traps in this set. So that'll be interesting to see where that goes from uh, from here. Now my, um, my next question for you is um, because there we let's let's talk about Chimera for a minute. Let's talk about Chimera yeah. and the illusionist uh, the illusionist types now. So, uh, how do you how do you feel about the fact that all the illusionist monsters are basically spirit reaper? Yeah, I'm. I think it's going to be fun to see. It's going to be a very technical deck to play. I think if you have to have a specific, uh, you're going to have to think a specific way in order to play it. I think there's a lot of things that you're going to have to do in order to line things out with that deck. And I think it's got one of the most powerful fusion spells in the game right now as well. Yep. Um, it's a quick effect fuse on you can that you can do on your opponent's turn and then set up lots of interruption for later on. Mm -hmm. I just kind of start hiccups through their uh, through their combo line while your opponent's playing. Yeah, come um, fusion's very very busted and it's not once per turn. And every fusion you search or every fusion you make pulls back that chimera fusion from the graveyard too. Pretty much. Yeah, so and like you just keep re like the recyclability of that deck is insane. Like it's just able to keep. It's like, oh, you got rid of it. Guess what? It's coming back next turn. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, uh, it it also, like, it does, it has several main deck monsters that are just, like, general negates. Like, I think the one's called Cornfield or something. It's Corn something. Like Cornfield Codal. Yeah, it's, that's a graveyard negation. And then the Mirror Shield guy, he does something weird like that, too. Like, they got some pretty, uh, it's going to be cool. It's going to be very, very crazy. And people are going to use it and probably slide it. I think I think they're gonna do like a branded Chimera build. I'm gonna see that coming out. Yeah, I could I could foresee that'd be that'd be pretty wild to see. Uh, there's also a deck that not a whole. Uh, there's been some people to talk about, but I think this might be a, the, one of the next top tier one decks, and that would be Rescue Ace. Oh and, man, really? But yeah, I think Rescue Ace is going to be insane because right now, as of right now, all of the all the new support that's been flooded in, it's not going to be, pre and it's going to be readily available to people as well, because with some of the openings that I've seen and some of the uh, the cards that I've seen in the English print, 
all of them are going to be commons or supers. I don't think there's any ultras or secrets for, for rescue ace in this set. Mm -hmm. Most of them were printed in Amazing Defenders, I believe. Yep. So, like mm -hmm. Hydrant, uh, Turbulence, and all those, those are going to be the, the money cards and the, the harder cards to find. But your main key staples are printed as a common in this set. Yeah, so, you're going to be able to. The expensive one, if I remember correctly, right now. Which one? Hydrant. Hydrant's the most expensive one right now. Yes. Hydrant and uh, Turbulence are the two most expensive, Hydrant being the most. Mm -hmm. Hydrant's because like you the can, guy. You can pretty much Hydrant. I think it's like Hydrant lock somebody. But it's like they activate something. If you flip a trap, there's a trap that they have that doesn't let them use an effect or like a monster effect or something while Hydrant's on field. Like they can't respond to it or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's but, one of the newer traps. Yeah, that's in the set, I, I believe. Um, I, for back to the illusion thing, though, I think I think it'll take another couple waves for them to be able to look, actually come out with uh, a specific, like an illusion specific deck without it being splashed with anything like branded or uh, any sort of other splashable engine. I think that the illusion, like the whole Chimera decks, could come right out the gate and go straight to tier one. Yeah, I just think that um, because of all the the bullshit it can do, and it's got a big, it's got a big fusion monster that's third or three hundred that can drop stuff to zero and then attack multiple times into the stuff that they dropped to zero and do a bunch of weird stuff. Yeah, and uh, the next thing that I kind of want to go over is mm -hmm. there's there's three three other big decks that got some support, not a whole not a whole lot of support, but still some at least. Runic and Makonko. Both of which got a few cards of support. Uh, Makonko got a brand new uh, ritual boss monster in this set too. Yeah, and Runic got one more monster. That was the, they only got one card in the set for support, but it's a they very did, good but one. That is probably one of the most like it's it's a crazy card. I, I was looking it over. It is a um, it's like a what is it Omega at home? Yeah, Rima, it's, it's a level Fudge. nine. It, people are gonna play it with generator and yeah it's a temporarily it's a temporary omega, omega but they get it back at the end phase not in, instead of like your like instead of their end phase so to speak or they get it back at the and, end phase and i think if i'm not mistaken whenever there's like a certain effect let me check here i think it's whenever a certain effect is activated or whenever your opponent activates a monster effect of the sort they're mm -hmm. able to get Token. Yeah, if your opponent adds a card from deck to hand, you can special summon a runic token. So you're able to create at least like some sort of token, and this might you might see the adventure engine be splashed into it again as well. So uh, I th I think this is going to be absolutely crazy. Um, I think this, this is one of my favorite secret rares that's going to be printed in this set. I'm yeah. going to do some testing with it. I'm actually already in the, in the midst of doing that with. Um, the next not core set that comes out August 11th. Are you talking about uh, Overlord? Is Overlord the one coming out? No, the next one is not a uh, core set. It comes out August 11th. It is a legendary duelist set, and uh, it's called the uh, it's for, it's the volcanic one. That's where oh, the fire one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember about I'm that. excited to play that because one of the variants that I'm gonna play is if they don't hit Runic within the next ban list. It's going to be the build I'm taking to the YCS. So, it, it's a OTK Volcanic Runic. <laughs> because you're able to just dump your hand, search uh, search out all the stuff you need. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. We tried talking about that before, too, with the, with the one guy, and you can just burn him. Yeah, Emperor. And every time they special summon a monster, they take 500. So if you get them low enough, they can't play through the combo, especially decks like Sprite, who special out. Like, they just play so free. They just dump the entire hand, and they're able to have, like, Sprite, Carrot, Gigantic, Sprint, like, everything on the field, and Beaver. They're just able to get all that out in, like, less, like, in a single turn and just be able to do that. And this card was is going to be one of the things that restrict them. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the one deck that I've been waiting to talk about for, <laughs> for Dune. <laughs> all right, so uh, for anyone who's, like, relatively new to the channel or new to like keeping up with that type of stuff mana dm gets the most support hands down out of everybody out of dune they get a extreme amount of cards they get a trap they get a uh they get a field spell they get a trap card that recurs your spells back 
because when it's on the field, it's a new formation. You can grab a spell trap in graveyard and then set it back on the field if it has vices in its name. Or, well, not in its name, in its text. If it is a trap card, you can use it the same term you set it to. For example, say you can pull back like a rival. You can use it, and you can grab your field spell and set the field spell, then just flip it back over and use it, too. Like, it's disgusting. Then, mm -hmm. uh, Pristine Planet Amaterra, which I think is ca just called, uh, New World Amaterra, or World Amaterra now, and for the English yeah, version of it's, it. Yeah, it's printed as a super in the English version. Yeah, that's gonna be amazing, because it helps on recursion, and it just helps pull back your field spells, so it's like, I don't know, fucking reverse terraforming, because instead of searching from, uh, deck and adding it to hand, you're adding it from graveyard back to hand. And um, you, we get Vices Amaterra. Vices Amaterra does not need a tuner to make it, which is what's going to make it so busted. Plus, it also yep. helps going into the Crimson Dragon line. And mm -hmm. basically, it's your second room heart, but Vices Amaterra can search all the field spells, too, because it just says search a card with Vices' name in the text, which is and then, disgusting. And then we get the third and I believe the final level two tuner. We get the Manadian Taurus. Yeah, which yeah. is Taurus. Taurus is great. Isn't it? He's a two yes. up, but he's great. Yeah, he is one of. I think he's probably the best or one of the best. I think me to me has one of the best. But Meek's it's the best open one. With that one. Going first, you're gonna grab Meek. Going second, if you already if you going second, I would probably grab Torrid. And then yeah. use Torrid to grab Fearless because then in the battle phase you just if you run through all three of your Fearlesses, your Synchro Monsters will have an additional fifteen hundred and nothing says fuck you like a forty five hundred attack Baron. Yeah, and then uh, that's not even including including if you do the cross sheep line as well. Oh yeah, it's oh yeah yeah he'll go straight to fifty two. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So you're like, oh. I think people are starting to finally catch on because this. Uh, I checked the price of Calarium today, and Calarium's up to forty dollars now. Oh, it's finally moving. It's been sitting at like it's sitting at like twenty five forever. I need to yeah, uh, price price check on, price check my deck and see where it's sitting at because I know everything's gonna start creeping up finally. Yeah, I think those for for those who have the cards. Right now, mm -hmm. I would probably sit on them and wait because there's going to be. Everybody's now starting to catch on that Manadium is not a bad deck. It's it just loses hard to roll and cash right for now. Yeah, I mean even with cash, it, it could play through it. It just depends if you're. What's the, what's the word? If cash is going first and then they just set up a rise, I mean, all it takes is an imperm and then we're, we're, we're free to go. Like, because typically when I'm going is cash, yeah. I'm going second. If I have, like, imperm, book of moon, they didn't use shifter and they're sitting on their riser and all their other stuff, I'll, I'm chewing through that board. Like, I'm 100% going to break through yeah. and kill them. Now, if they shifter and then they have their arise out, like, they go shifter and then they do the arise and then I got to play through the shifter and the arise, not so much because then I got to deal with the double banish instead of just booking their arise hard, so to speak. It's funny you say that. Me and uh, me and my uh, my buddy Brad were talking about that uh, before mm -hmm. before we started on uh, on this. Uh, it's still you're still able to play through it. Yeah. So one of the main things is like you're very not going... linear where you're going if you're playing through it. Yeah, the line changes a little bit. You don't go directly into Baron like you usually would. You go into Dispater instead, and then be able to pull out stuff from Banished and continue on yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, because. The dissipator on the line is not bad, and I mean you're gonna end up like dumping a bunch of stuff. But your orbs at the end, if you have Calarium, those orbs will come back from banish. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter at all. And then uh, Despeter, Despeter is really strong in that situation too because you can just you can still make Baron and Cross Sheep all the time. You wouldn't make Cross Sheep though. You wouldn't make yeah. Cross Sheep because uh, the Astrolab play would be dead, so Cross Sheep would be pretty irrelevant. What do you think would be another Link Two to run in that deck? Um, it depends on what you want to use it for. Like, for example, if they brought back Sprite Elf. Sprite Elf. Yeah. <laughs> um, a Link to uh, the Sky Striker Link Monster to just pop. I, mean, yeah. I don't have that one. Plus, uh, I don't, my extra deck is so tight, I don't, I, I don't even have room for that. I just added, uh, I, I just added, uh, Beatrice into the deck and did the Trivia Karma stuff, right? Because I mean, yeah, I'm actually I picked up a Trivi Karma this week, this weekend for uh, for specifically that line. Yeah, because 
the uh, lines that I see for it. Because I'm over here, like, people are saying, trying to tell me, like, you just overlay both biases. And I was like, no. And it's like, you do the biases, and then you uh, take, you go try Edge Master, you do your draw, and then you overlay them in the Beatrice. And then if you don't have a field spell yet, you do that, and then you dump Trivi Karma so you can pull Calarium. Or you dump yeah. Precision to kind of further your combo line and kind of make your big fat board, which as long as you get your reframing and stuff, you're good. And I guess that kind of leads us into the, the next category. What decks are we looking forward to in Dune format? Like, what's going to be best deck Dune format, right? Yeah. Oh, you already know what I'm going to say. Manadium, man. I, I think I'm... Mm-hmm. I think me of sound mind can say the same. After this, uh, I, it, I it believe does, it's going to do way too much. Drop. It's going to do way too much. You can do you can do sixty card post Dune. You could you can literally do sixty card vices pile. Yeah. <laughs> you can run all the planet cards and everything, and it would work. Because, by the way, I, mean, I did some I did some looking. There's only one planet card that doesn't search vices, and it's actually one that's going to surprise you. It's it's race off. Race off is the only one that does. Yeah, it. I kept thinking for a while that it did, and then I read it one day, and I was like, ah, I didn't have this anyway. As well, this is pointless to me. But, yeah, I was. Uh, there's actually a build I'm wanting to kind of tweak and test with because it's able to go into. Uh, you're able to go into level nines and level elevens fairly quickly, mm-hmm. um, and that is the the cash build, the cash medium variant. It's very experimental. I think there's. I think I've the only thing that would be for that. I think there's one there's one card that's gonna make that good, and that's gonna be Rev Synchron because you can go into tens easier if you add Rev Synchron to that build. Yeah, but the deck already like Manadium by itself goes in the tens like it's butter already. That's like basically yeah, like a yeah. better source hole. Like my per- my personal beef with the Manadium Cash build is it's like you're playing Manadium, you're playing Cash together, but realistically most of the t- most of the time that the the deck ends up getting wins is because they're using the Cash stuff, right? Like they're just yeah. strong. They strong arm the cash stuff into it just straight out, and then sit on the arise heart and do the basic stuff, which the deck doesn't need to do that to win. They can break boards. It just all depends on what your like defensive and offensive cards are that are non. What is it? Non archetype related. So like dark ruler, book of moon, lightning storm, shit like yeah. that. Yeah. Your board breakers and your negates. Yeah, I I, I prefer to do hand traps over board breakers, but I mean we're about to. We're about to be in a real heavy hand trap format. Droll is going to be number one, just hands down for a while, especially yeah. the post in. I think you'll see uh, Droll for one thing, and Dark Ruler no more will be. Uh, those are like borderline sideboard mainboard now. Oh, I mean, I'm I'm mainboarding Dark Ruler and sideboarding Droll, so it's, it's yeah. like that. And, and like that. Uh, the next deck that I kind of want to branch off into that that might be a top contender for number one would be Pearly. They got some support in this set as well. They got the E Pearly Noir. Um, they got two uh, or a new trap that literally lets you. It's as soon as you flip it, if it's not negated, you go into another uh, another uh, X Y Z monster. Oh, I'm I'm not happy that they're getting a mini Noir, dude. I'm just not. There. Yeah, I think I think here uh, here after that we're gonna have to talk a little bit about the uh, the ban list. What might or might not get hit for Dune. Yeah, let's go ahead and elaborate the ban list real quick so we can go ahead and close this out. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure we've already exceeded twenty minutes anyway. <laughs> yeah. So so ban list wise, I I personally think that your main cards that are gonna get hit, uh, I believe you will finally see the fall of Cash Tira. Yes. I think if they don't either limit or ban Fenrir and Birth. Mm-hmm. then the deck will be completely dead if they just limit Fenrir to one or if they do anything less than than Fenrir to one then that deck is still going to be somewhat viable um, or they or they can just ban Birth and the deck's dead uh, Birth is the heart and soul of that deck besides D-Shifter because D-Shifter shuts off a good, a good portion of the meta already so uh, if it doesn't get hit like that they're just people over here I guess in the, in the US are just going to start doing what the OCG's been doing for for a while now, which is run three copies of Ogre. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'm ready for Shifter to get banned. I'm ready for Cash to get axed, personally. And yeah. I, th- I think they're gonna start moving some floodgates to one. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna limit Eradicator, probably. Or something. They're gonna do something to Eradicator. Yeah. There's no way. They just, 
two people got sacked in huge events, like near the very top, if not in the very final match of the whole event over Eradicator. Yeah, I think a lot of those, all of those big cards, I think Shifter and Eradicator are definitely on the radar, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with the whole, uh, with especially with the uh, Nationals here in the U.S. or the World Championship qualifiers. Uh, I think with some of the other decks that are going to get hit as well would be Pearly, even after they got this new wave of support, they may get hit again. Because mm -hmm. um, with this new support, it's going to be, it's not going to matter. Even if they hit Delicious to one, it's still it's still going to be a crazy deck to play against. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, um, I think that they're gonna put any spell to one. I I don't know how I don't know about the whole floodgate. Like if they're gonna hit floodgates or not. ASF is a really solid one as well. Um, but it's it'd have to be like a blanket. Like I'd be okay with the lingering floodgate hand traps to be like blanketed to one. Or like, they just kind of do what the OCG did with D Shifter, D Shifter One. Uh, just kind of do the whole blanket with that. Maybe floodgates. Um, I run floodgates. I think most people nowadays run some sort of floodgate in the At sideboard. Least one, usually. Yeah. But I see. I foresee that could be a potential thing. And uh, one of the other decks that I think may be getting hit, and I really hope not, would be Runic. Um, especially with the Runic Volcanic o OTK being on the table now, mm -hmm. if they don't hit it, that is going to be a very uh, potentially popular deck, and it might be it might start overrunning. Um, and uh, Sprite, definitely Sprite. I think we might Sprite's actually get gonna, a harder. Yeah, Sprite's going to finally get hit, hit, not just love taps. They they play again, like we mentioned earlier. They, it, the deck just plays too free. It's just able to dump out the entire hand and make this three negate board or more and just be able to stop stop people from playing the game. Yeah, they still lose the Dark Ruler, though. They have no out to, like, something like that, which is, like, what keeps that deck in check, really. Yeah. That or, like, just people negating stuff at the wrong time or just bad player playing the deck wrong. I've ran into cases where they make the almighty board, so they have their carrot, their red, they got their sprint set up to do the bounce, they have all that stuff, they got smashers, double cross, and this is with Manadium, and I still break the board plus kill them and play through all of it without having the Dark Ruler of them only because I understand the interactions better than my opponent would. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you just uh, if you open up with, if you're going second and you open up with Dark Ruler no more and evenly. Just free. And one starter, you've got pretty much game. Yep, it is just free. Um, that being said, uh, is there anything else you want to elaborate before we go ahead and uh, cut this off? Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the main things that I do on, uh, I guess, on my channel a little bit is I do a lot of uh, 3D printing uh, for people just at events. Uh, so uh, YCS in October, I'll be going to. It's Indy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get the chance, I'm going to try to meet up with uh, Team a Mr. Extra right here, and we're going to try to hang out and uh, meet some of you guys. And if you get to play against me or if you just see me out and about, Ask me about some of the 3D printing stuff I do. Usually I have some field centers whenever I go to these big events, and I give them to you for free because I appreciate you guys for doing what you're doing, and I'm sure Mr. Extra here also appreciates you guys for sh for showing up and sitting around and talking to us for a little bit. Oh, yeah, for but, sure. But uh, with that being said, um, I'm thankful for you, for you having, me, having me on here today and uh, being able to discuss the mail a little bit. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're going to be coming back. What, we're definitely including you in the future meta talk videos, whatever. We have someone else. We're trying to line it for the next one, but worst case scenario, I'll cycle and pull you back in a couple months when we go to do this again. Uh, that being said, I'll go ahead and cut it off here, and uh, that's all we got on our end. Yeah. Thanks. You see.